let's now tackle this tricky Diophantine from the AMC 10B. How many ordered pairs of integers satisfy m squared plus mn plus m squared n squared is m squared n squared? So this actually has a really neat trick. There's many ways to solve this problem, but I'll show you the way I personally came up with. So the key thing here is, huh, this is really, really close to a perfect square. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we just add mn? Because then we can get a factorization. You get mn, n plus n squared, and then now we have m squared, n squared, plus mn. There's nothing but mn times mn plus 1. Cool. So this is actually a very common pattern. Oops. Whenever you have something, mn, mn plus 1. Let's say you have a, notice that the product is a perfect square, which means that if we look at the prime factorization, let's say, this is just a random number, by the way. All these exponents are even. So mn, mn plus 1. Hmm, they're consecutive numbers. Do you know anything special about consecutive numbers? 2 and 3. 3 and 4. They're GCD. They don't share any factors. Their GCD is 1. Why? Well, if, if you don't immediately see why, let's say we can just use Euclidean al algorithm to prove this. This is equal to GCD, MN, and 1. Oops. That's the proof right there. Euclidean algorithm, right? We subtract MN from MN plus 1. We get that this is equal to GCD MN1, which is clearly 1. So these two terms are relatively prime. They don't share any factors. So if we're trying to, let's say this was m plus n squared, and we're trying to sign, okay, MN, you get some prime factors. MN plus 1, you get some prime factors. They must take different prime factors. So for example, we could be like, okay, MN, you get this stuff. And mn plus 1, you get these factors. But we, what we can't have is, let's say, 2 to the 8. Okay, mn gets a factor of 2 to the 4. And mn plus 1 gets a factor of 2 to the 4. Because it's not possible for both of these to be multiples of 16. They differ by 1. So these things must occupy completely different prime factors. But you notice anything about these numbers? They're both perfect squares. And that's the trick here. These are both have to be perfect squares because they're relatively prime and multiply to a perfect square. So what are the, oh, let me actually clarify something. They can be perfect squares or because it just has integers, they can also be negatives of squares. So that will also work because the negatives will just cancel out. So what are some squares that differ by one? So immediately you're like, huh, zero, one, four, nine, 16. There's not very many, right? Difference is three, five, seven. The only two perfect squares that differ by one are zero and one. But again, we have to be careful because negatives of perfect squares will also work. So we can also have negative zero and negative one. And again, negative zero is just going to be zero. So zero and negative one will also work because these are both negatives of squares and the negatives cancel. Or in this case, it doesn't really matter because they'll multiply to zero anyway. But actually, because this is 0 and negative 1, this thing has to be 1 more. So we would actually flip this. So this would be negative 1 and 0. So now we just have two cases. Case 1, mn is 0. Well, if mn is 0, either m or n is 0. Now, let's just say, just assume they're symmetric anyway. So let's just say m is 0. Then we plug it back into the original equation. We get 0 plus 0 plus n squared equals 0, so clearly n also is 0. In this first case, we only have one solution, 0, 0. Now in the second case, we have negative 1 and 0. So mn is negative 1. So what do we do with this negative 1 here? Well, mn are both integers, so there's two cases, right? 1, negative 1, or negative 1, 1. And the question is, do these both have m plus m squared is 0, right? Because this thing is going to be 0. So is m plus n also 0? And the answer is yes. So both of these will work. And this gives us two more solutions. So in all, all in all, we have three solutions.
I hope you enjoyed this solution. It was a brilliant problem. The key trick, looking for factorizations. And then we realize that, okay, both of these have to be perfect squares or negatives of perfect squares. And then we just have two cases, which are pretty easy. Now there's another solution actually, which involves multiplying this by two, and then you can do some nice difference of squares from there. Hope you enjoyed.